Six years Summer Smash, second year in Bridgeview. Um, best year yet. Loading. We we I don't know. I think everything is kind of you know proof of concept up until this point, and really working to get to a moment where you're able to to create something that you know is bringing people together and is really you know something that that people remember forever and we think that we do that every year with the festival but i think every year we get better at really dialing the in the experience aspect of it all and um i think this year is the best yet from the lineup to our activations to just where we're at um in terms of being prepared i just just feel like I don't know. We're going to say every year is the best yet. So it's just, it's a natural thing that just falls out of the mouth. But this, this lineup is something that Berto and I are really proud of because we've been working on getting, um, you know, a lot of these acts for a very long time, you know, um, having Travis Scott on our festival has always been a dream and, um, not only bringing him to the festival, but doing it in a creative way, um, with his whole collective, um, Cactus Jack and doing it in a way that's never been done before kind of is, you know, part of the DNA of our festival is, you know, trying to create moments that haven't been seen before, you know, so that being paired with Chief Keith coming home for the first time in 12 years since his Lollapalooza performance in 2020, 12 is really just exciting for us. You know, it feels new. It feels fresh. It feels innovative. It feels like a step in the right direction for everything that, you know, we, we set our foot our feet out to do with Summer Smash every year, you know, is just do the unthinkable and try to, you know, create an experience. So uh, that's that's where I stand with the, the lineup and, and my excitement for it. Specifically this year, it does stem with the lineup, obviously, as Cole said, you know, the return of Chief Keith, but also we have some just really special performances. I mean, this is uh, one of Playboy Cardi's only shows of the entire year um, in, in all of North and South America. This is... Uh, one of the only festival plays that Travis and Cactus Jack are doing um, this year. Um, and, and the other thing too, um, that we're really proud of is we're fully independent. Um, so we are officially the, the largest independent hip hop festival in the country. Um, and so being able to do that, you know, from the ground up and starting small and growing into what it is today, I think that just really sets us apart um, as a festival and just a, as, a, as a partnership and, and everything in between uh growing pains i mean with with having a festival it's inevitable i mean with with building anything you're gonna have growing pains and uh i think that's what makes it exciting for us you know we're able to to learn from every year we throw the festival you know um whether that's uh from the angle of the site map and where the stages should be placed or you know um what artists we think are a good fit and we'd like to return um right down to the food that we have at the festival so it's always this trial and error um always figuring it out mentality but uh berto and i met actually um through doing shows uh i berto has been throwing shows for 10 plus years um i've been doing shows for 10 plus years and um i threw a show with berto years and years ago and uh it was the lyrical lemonade the first Lyrical Lemonade Summer Smash. So before it was the Summer Bash, or no, no, the first Lyrical Lemonade Summer Bash before it was a Summer Smash. And it was at an indoor venue um, called uh, Portage Theater. And uh, the show lost a ton of money. And um, Berto was, was able to um, really help me out with, you know, um, just like holding my own in the venue and stuff because he had uh he had worked closely with that venue and he really he, we really formed a brotherhood there and um started doing shows together from that point forward and it was just a there's like a, a a chemistry that can't really be explained and it's just like always having each other's back and that showed me a lot of a lot of um heart and trust and and since then we've just been really, really dialed in. Berto could really tell the story of how the festival itself started um, in a probably more beautiful way than I could. But it's been 10 years in the making, um, a friendship, a brotherhood, a partnership. And uh, and yeah, there's always growing pains like anything else, but it's, it's fun. It's like one big art project where we get to keep, you know, 
painting different colors and different strokes and seeing what works and, and what doesn't. And um, I wouldn't rather be doing it with anyone else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, this this festival started just like Cole said, um, as a yearly indoor event. And when we had started it, it kind of, you know, it was hard to get off the ground. And after two years of doing it indoors, we kind of, you know, saw saw what was coming and we you know, saw the demand growing for our shows more and more. And we we're, you know, decided like, Hey, we got to kind of take this thing outdoors. And we started in 2018 in Douglas park as a one day, single day event. We had two stages. We did 10,000 people that year. Um, and for us at the time, it seemed like, you know, bigger than, 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 I mean, I feel for me, at least it felt like bigger than what this feels like today. Cause at the time, you know, it was like, just seemed like a, an impossibility to have our own music festival when we executed the first one. It was just kind of, you know, surreal. And then from then on, we, you know, in 2019, we expanded to two days, went to 20,000 people a day. Uh, There's no festival in 2020 because uh, of COVID. But then when we returned in 2021, we expanded to three days um, and we actually, you know, got to 30,000 people a day. So, you know, 90,000 attendees across the three days and, you know, slowly been growing it ever since then. Um, you know, one step at a time, and now you know. Now we're expecting thirty-five to forty thousand this weekend. A day. Yes. Yes. <laughs> wow. We're looking to create history. We, this is a an iconic moment. You know, being that Chief Keith is, you know, uh, one of the the biggest influential people out of Chicago in the hip hop space, and to be able to host his homecoming, um, it's it's an honor and a privilege, and we're just excited to 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 bring him home and i think it's going to go down in a, as a moment in chicago hip-hop history is you know when, when chief keith came home and uh you know tickets are still on sale at the summer and uh hope to see everyone there the, the magnitude of this moment is something that is really really it's almost indescribable i think it's going to go down in the history books i think there'll be documentaries about this moment um chief keith is one of the more um influential artists in hip-hop over the last 15 years and you know he's so integrated into um chicago and the the, the hip-hop and music scene here and um to bring him back home in a way that feels like a true celebration is i mean very very exciting for us and i i truly think will be one of the more memorable iconic talked about moments and and not just hip-hop uh live event history but, but music live event history music history in general so that's how we're approaching the weekend um it's the history books right here and tell our viewers what day and time it will chief keith hit the stage first i'll take it away it's going to be sunday june 16th at 9 p.m here at uh, seeking stadium <laughs> 